my brothers and sisters, the Lord want me to remind you of the four days of glory and victory that will be coming up this week. And I want you to take a piece of paper. You are going to take note because he doesn't want you to miss it. Before I start with the message, we are going to light up a candle, blow the shofar, and ring the bell so we may advance before the throne of God. We are going to ask God to bless us with the Holy Spirit, bless the hearer, and bless his servant that will expound on his word. So without delay, let us start right now. So I may point out for you these four days. Do you have your pen and, and paper? February the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. These are the four days of glory and victory. Put that down. Corresponding with the 12th day of Edar, 13, 14, and 15. I'm, I'm going to repeat that again. Guess what? Something extraordinary is happening in the atmosphere. And the Lord said, His children will see His glory and His victory at work in their lives. February 21st, the 12th day of Edar. And if you have a chance, make sure you, you hear the shock mad that day. Oh, especially these four days. Please. This is a day of dominion. On, uh, on the uh, February 21st. February 22nd, that will be for you a day of victory when God will work out his vengeance in your life. He, the Lord will avenge you. Those people who are against you, the Lord will give you victory over them. That will be the 13th day of Edar. 13th day of Edar 1. Actually, this spirit will be in the atmosphere for probably 60 days according to the culture of men. If you want to understand what I'm saying, so try to understand this. And guess what? February the 23rd and the 24th, you will enter your celebration. As it was in the days of old. And they are celebrating it now. In the land of Israel, Purim. When the people celebrate their victory against the enemy of God. You may not, they may not realize that when they stand against you, they stand against God. So God will teach them a lesson. 
Amen and amen. So therefore, here's what the Lord said for me to read for you. So you may already enter the, amb the amb ambience of your victory. Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. Lift up your heads, you gates. Let me tell you. When you are serving God, you are a gate. The gate of blessing. You are blessed to be a blessing. You can go out there and touch people and say, be blessed in Jesus. Be blessed. You are the gate of blessing. People may not realize that. You are a gate of blessing. Lift up your heads. You get. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. The Messiah is an old man here. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. That the king of glory may come in. Let me tell you. The king of glory will come in your life. This week coming. Hallelujah. Who is this king of glory? And we are going to identify it for you. Hallelujah. Esther was talking to a king on earth. We've been praying to the king of glory. This is why I'm saying glory is entering your life. The Lord. Strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. And this is a da. This is a da, my brothers. This is a da, my sisters. Verse 9. Lift up your heads. You get. Amen and amen. Yeah, you cannot be a child of God. Your head is down. Lift up your heads. Because God is going to lift up your heads. Lift them up. You ancient door. That the king of glory may come in. Hallelujah. God is repeating himself here. Who is he? This king of glory. So. The Lord Almighty, He is the King of Glory. The Almighty God he is the one that is going to display in your life His glory and His victory. So, the shockment of the day for you, the shockment of the, this Sabbath for you, is to tell you, my brothers, my uh, sisters. Yes, the shock of the Lord is telling you this is holiday. This is holiday. This is for you a day of prayer. And if you have forget a little bit, this is Sabbath day. <laughs> Amen. But today, in this Sabbath, you are going to ask for something special. You are going to ask God for wealth. Not for abundance only. Not for harvest only. But for wealth. Why? Because you want a lifetime of blessing. You want to tap in his infinite blessing. So you may leave a legacy for your children and your grandchildren. So today in your prayer, according to Shokma, and I have more explanation I, have, I can tell you. I'm, I will not. Because God said, just say it. Don't, you don't have to give them proof. Today God said, if you ask me, for his purpose 
for your life. He will tell you. So you may inherit his wealth. And a lifetime blessing from him. So you may leave a legacy. Behind you. So. According to wisdom. And shokma. This is also a day that you must ask God. You must thank God. For your victory. Say thank you God. For giving me the victory. And you are going to put on the first of those. Against Satan. Against his wicked people. And you can go out there naming names. And as soon you thank God for the victory against this and that person, this person cannot stand in front of you. This is a day to ask God to showcase his glory into your life. Yeah, you said, God, showcase your glory. When people see you, they say, oh, something is strange with this person. This is also a day to purpose yourself to be like God and to be like Jesus. When, you know, God said, you know, tell them this is a day to be like me and to be like my son. And you are going to do something extraordinary. The shock my of the Lord is telling you. This is a day also to tell God that you will honor his name with that victory. You are going to say, God, I will honor your name. I will not go around and say, because I was smart, because I was educated, because I was, you know, you are going to give God the honor. You said, if I, if this thing happened, when the enemy come and beg at your feet, you are going to tell them, you know, don't, don't beg me, beg God. That God that put you under my feet. Amen. And you are going to tell God that you will give him the glory. And you will give him the praise for the victory. Yes, you have to tell God clearly, God, I give you the glory. I give you the praise. I have a lot of scriptures that I could share with you. Here's the plot here. In Esther 3 verse 13. You imagine Haman already set up the people of God for failure. To a point, he ended up convincing the king to practically kill his own wife and the people, you know, of Israel, where the, 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 the wife of the king come from, to kill them all. To a point... The king, on a way, already signed the decree and tell the guy, okay, you will do that. Dispatches were sent by couriers to all the king's provinces with the order to destroy, kill, and annihilate all, and annihilate all the Jews. Young and old, women and children, on a single day, the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Edar, and to plunder their goods. So he said, you know, king, sign this, sign this. And the king just go ahead and sign it. But guess what? When the king find out that this guy wanted to kill his own wife and his wife's people. So the king said, now, let you kill them instead. In Esther 8 verse 12, 
What we read? The day appointed for the Jews to do this, that means to kill their enemies now in all the provinces of King Sussex was the 13th day of Edar, the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Edar. So, the, you know, Queen Esther and Mordecai said, you know, they wanted to kill us on the 13th. So, we are going to say to the king, we will kill them on that same day. So, you see, the table were turned against a man and his people. And verse 13, a copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every province and made known to the people of every nationality so that the Jews would be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. And then, this is where you get the 13th day of Edar. Amen and amen. February the 23rd, like I said to you right here. Let me have you see that again. Let's go back. On February the 12th, 13, eh, eh, February 22nd, which is the 13th day of Edar. February 22nd. That will be the day of victory when God will allow you to avenge yourself on your enemies. Amen and amen. So let's go back here. Showing you this. So now, what we are going to see right here. The Jews destroy their enemies. And you can read for yourself Esther 9. Let's start with verse 1. We're going to be very quick. On the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Edar, the edict commanded by the king, was to be carried out. On this day, the enemies of the Jews had hope to overpower them. But now the tables were turned and the Jews got the upper hand over those who hated them. So they hated you. No. They think they got you. But you got them. Then they do. You know. Destroying them. The Jews assembled in their cities. In all the provinces of Kinkers. Sources. To attack those determined to destroy them. No one. Could stand against them because the people of all the other nationalities were afraid of them. And all the nobles of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, the king's administrators helped the Jews because fear of Mordecai had seized them. Mordecai was prominent in the palace. His reputation spread throughout the provinces and he became more and more powerful. Amen and amen. The Jews struck down all their enemies with the sword, killing and destroying them. And they did whatever they pleased to those who hated them. Hallelujah. They, let's jump on verse 7. They also kill <clears throat> Pashandata, Dalphon, As, Aspata, Porata, Adalia, Aridata, Pamash. Ta, Arisai, Aridai, Envai, Zata. And this is the most important thing. This is why I say the Bible is coded. Esther, Esther 9 verse 10. Le, listen to what you will read. The ten sons of a man, son of Amadeta, the enemy of the Jews, but they did not lay their hands on the plunder. So they ended up killing all these people and especially the ten son of Haman. That means Haman is dead. 
Now his children cannot come after the Jews. Amen and amen. Isn't it wonderful? When God is giving you the victory. Let's jump on verse 12. The king said to Queen Esther, The Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men and the 10 sons of a man in the citadel of Susa. What have they done in the rest of the king province? Now, what is your petition? It will be given you. What is your request? It will also be granted. The king said, Do you want more? Do you want more? <laughs> and this is when Esther ended up asking, All right, you know, uh, we're going to take care of the sons. If it is pleases the king, Esther answered, give, give the Jews in Susa permission to carry out these days, edict tomorrow also. He said, <laughs> Let them take care of the. And let him and Stenson be empowered on poles. Amen and amen. So the king commanded that this be done. And Edik was issued in Susa, and they employed the ten son of a man. Amen and amen. The Jews in Susa came together on the 14th day of the month of Edar, and they put to death in Susa 300 men. They killed the first 500, and after the king granted it, the ten son is gone, 300 men more. But they did not lay their hands on the plunder because this is what they wanted. They wanted to kill the Jews and steal their stuff. But they said, we are not taking their stuff. Meanwhile, the reminder of, of the Jews who were in the king's provinces also assembled to protect themselves and get relief from their enemies. They killed 75,000. In the rest of the province, but they did not lay their hands on the plunder, and they ended up killing another seventy-five thousand. Amen and amen. So let's jump. Uh, verse seventeen. This happened on the thirteenth day of the month of Adar, and on the fourteenth day, they rested and made it a day of feasting and joy. The Jews in Susa, however, had assembled on the 13th day and 14th day and then on the 15th day they rested and made it a day of 15 feasting and joy this is where you get the word purim this that is why we all jews those living in villages observe the 14th of the month of Eda as a day of joy and feast and feasting a day to give presents to each other. So you see that when you go over there, you know, uh, you know, right now in Israel, you know, next week they will give presents to each other. Mordecai recorded this event, uh, verse 20, and he sent letters to all the Jews throughout the provinces of King Sussis, near and far to have them celebrate annually the 14th and 15th day of the month of Edar. This is where you get Purim. So, my brothers, my sisters, the Lord wants you to be aware what is going on every year, what is in the atmosphere for you to enjoy. The Lord wants you to know that this is Eda, the month of glory and the month of victory. So prepare yourself. Pray accordingly today. And guess what? February the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. That will be for you four days of practically glory and victory for you. Things will happen. And the Lord said to me to do a special prayer for you. And I want you, if you can close your eyes or listen attentively what I'm going to say. Holy Father, you said 
to me to preach to the people about what's going to happen next week. On the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and the 24th of February. Father, I'm asking you to bless your people with whatever they ask you for. And Esther prayed, talked to the king and said something extraordinary. If you are happy with me, that's what she started by saying. If you are happy with your people, I don't know what they're asking you for. Give them exactly what they ask for. And give me exactly what, I'm, what I ask you for. If it is in your good pleasure for your people to enjoy these things, give them exactly what they ask for. And now, grant them, grant them the desire of their hearts. Give them the victory over the devil, over all wicked people in their midst. You know, make available your infinite blessing, your wealth, your kingdom for them to enjoy and cause their enemies to bow down at their feet. And Father, I know some of them, they just want blessing. They don't want to serve you. But I'm asking you, make this year 2024, especially this February, the day when they will see your glory in their lives, O oh Lord. The moment when they will testify that they heard a prayer and whatever they ask for, you have done it for them. You are a God of justice. I know you. You will have a way if they disobey you to deal with them. But... I'm praying you like I'm praying when I'm doing prophecy. Do this for them. Give them exactly what they want. Let's do this experiment, Lord. Give them. If they want a brand new car, give them the brand new car. A new house, give them. They want a million dollars, give them. Ten million, give them. They want to pay their bill, pay their bills. Whatever money, whatever they want, give it to them. Do this experiment. If that can change them, so they may know that there is a God, that you are a blesser and not a cursor. Bless your people. Change their lives. Let them know that you are a good God. More willing to bless them than they are willing to obey. Let those who are grateful, and I know those who are grateful will give you the honor, will give you the glory, and will give you the praise. But those who will think that they have obtained these things by their own effort, you will know how to deal with them. But let them receive exactly what they ask for. Let the glory of God and the victory of God rain down from heaven upon all your children for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.